Now Thompson's model was accepted for some time. After some time, it was it was Rutherford, right? So it was Rutherford. It was Rutherford. Along with his two students. Okay, so so plus plus there was a fellow called Geiger. Okay, who became instrumental in the discovery of X-rays later, and there was another fellow called Marsden. Okay, these were the two students. Uh, along with him, along with them, they they he Rutherford actually decided to do an experiment. To he had no doubts rather about what what Thompson had come up with but he wanted to test with an experiment right till now the hypothesis of Thompson was not tested okay it was just a conjecture a guess okay which suited the overall neutrality of the atoms and was kind of in in consonance with whatever we were seeing around but it was not still tested okay so, so this fellow Rutherford, he set up an experiment like this, the, the experiment that is that is shown here, okay, here, this, and he went for, first of all, a gold foil. Why gold? Why should he go for gold foil? because he wanted as thin a layer of atom as possible he wanted the least preferably one but he knew they were so small that it was not possible to 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 mold any material into one atom thick okay but but then he'll not be able to see it maybe okay even if he molds it and it's not possible literally so so he went on looking for the most malleable material most malleable material right most malleable material most malleable material and he found gold to be the most malleable right you know how ductile gold is if if you have say one gram of gold you can get get a wire about two kilometers long on the foot. That ductile it is. Okay? And similarly it is very, very malleable. Malleable means means the capacity of getting beaten into thin sheets. Okay? Thin sheets. It's very, very thin sheet. Okay? He was under the impression that at this level and it was about a, a nanometer thick. Okay. I'm sorry, not not one nanometer, rather one nanometer becomes a bit too too small. Rather hundred nanometer thick. Okay? And he was of the opinion that, that it must be somewhere around around thousand thousand atoms thick. Okay? Thousand atoms thick. And he was pretty fine with it. More so because he had no other alternative. Okay, so he just could not could not do anything. What he planned was he took this gold foil. So so you can see this gold foil here. Okay, this is your gold foil. Can you see that? Can we see this gold foil? Hold on. So. Can we see this gold foil? Right, this gold foil. What he did, he took a, a circular screen of zinc sulfide. This is this is the, the the zinc sulfide, zinc sulfide, which acted as the detector. Okay, it acted as a detector, and then he took a 
a, a, a radioactive source, a, a source of a, a source of alpha particles. A source of alpha particles. This is a source of alpha particles and and, and it was cobalt 60. Okay. This is another story that he got this. People used to believe that that maybe Rutherford died because he was handling this radioactive material without understanding that it had alpha particles and it must be some cancer or something that killed him but there was quite another story and that's hilarious absolutely hilarious how he died okay uh, and and uh, <clears throat> and he got this cobalt 60 from none other than other than ma'am Ma'am Curie, right? And she also perhaps was not aware, so so she actually sent it in an envelope. Okay, and he used it here. This is a this is a lead chamber. This is a lead chamber because lead lead kind of stops the particles from emitting. It's a thick lead chamber is is, is wrapped around this so there was a small opening through which he decided to bombard this very thin foil of gold and he expected that since according to Thompson the positive charges were smeared around and we had very small very light electrons so, so perhaps he'll see that that all these particles, all these particles will go and hit it straight. Okay, but since you are actually charting uh, an, an unknown territory, so so you kind of wrap it around. Let us see what happens, where it goes, if at all it goes where, because you are not definite, right? This this was only a conjecture. So that's why this hole about 360 degree, not fully 360 degree, there had to be a small opening here for the alpha particle to get shot, right? So, so just to see, and he expected all of them, them to shoot through. And alpha particles that we are talking about here, they are nothing but, they are nothing but, but helium nucleus, helium nucleus, right? They were helium nucleus and that is He2 plus. Okay. And they are pretty pretty energetic particles. Okay. They are very, very energetic. So this is how he started his experiment. And let me tell you something more about it. Actually, this is not done in an open open environment. It is actually contained inside a chamber so that because you're dealing with radioactive material and it should not hurt you or harm you. So it is actually enclosed inside a radioactive chamber and and when when the radiation is not coming towards you and, and there is there is a window here somewhere here from, from where you can see see those small dots on the screen due to the due to the alpha particles going and hitting the screen okay it is phosphorescent and and you can see that and when nothing is coming towards you from the from the look-in window that you are looking through there is a small there is a small uh, there's small kind of kind of uh, tapping sound that you hear if nothing is coming out then it is kind of This indicates to you that the machine is working, there is some radioactive material and you are not facing the threat of those radioactive material. Right? Now, uh, the Geiger, the fellow Geiger and Marston, they were actually undergraduates. Right? They were not his colleagues. So they were given the, given the role of watching the experiment, so they were sitting through. Rutherford being a, a professor and, and a scientist, he did not have that much time to go and sit through an experiment. 
So when uh, once in a while he used to come and ask these people, then Geiger, Geiger and Marston, they told him, sir, so what happens after some time? The speed of this kind of increases. So it goes instead of it goes okay tap 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 instead of tap 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 it goes tap 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 tap. Now it means that you are getting those those radiations back somehow. Now first of all it was absolutely unbelievable for Rutherford. He did not expect something like that because because if the radiations are coming back the only way that 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 must be happening is that that this radiation is going ahead like this that this radiation is going like that this is going like that and from here from here it is okay and from here it is from, so so it's, it's going straight it's going straight like that and from here it is kind of coming back getting reflected okay and from where can it get reflected it can only get reflected from the atoms of the gold correct now that was never in his radar he never thought about it so he was pretty apprehensive and asked them to to watch it more carefully and they, the second day and the next day they reported the same thing that there are times when it goes from tap tap it goes tap 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 so that means you are getting some radiation back now he also sat through and heard this this voice and then when he watched he found that some there were where some of them were were kind of coming back as well okay so so what was happening somehow was was like that that most of most of the alpha particles they were they were getting through they were passing through through and through but but there was some so 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 passing through passing through slight deflection okay it is just passing through but somewhere some like these they were also kind of turning back by almost by almost so they were absolutely rebounding right they were rebounding back and it was this so 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 like this right and and, and somewhere deflected somewhere deflected by more angle okay now this was something that was absolutely startling okay this was something that was startling so so let me first kind of enumerate their observations so so this is what they observed so observations were this observations were were this okay observations what this the first observation was that most of the alpha particles most of the alpha particles alpha particles went through went through undeflected okay they went through undeflected and the second observation was that a small fraction was deflected by a small angle a small fraction deflected through small angle through small angles and the the main startling feature was the third point and that was that some of them kind of just rebounded okay okay they 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 went through 180 degrees so a very few a very few few alpha particles uh, that's about 1 in 20000 one about one in 20000 about one in 20000 they kind of just rebounded they bounced back right so 
will deflect it by by 180 degrees right so some did bounce back right now he was so startled by this he never expected that in the words i quote him of of rutherford he said it was as startling a fact as if you shot a 12 inch shell at a at a, at a tissue paper and it rebounded and hit you okay it was as startling for him as this understand but then the facts were there and it was an experiment that was repeated over and over because now we are going to report something first of all that was absolutely revolutionary because it was being reported for the first time and secondly because you were contradicting your own professor Thompson who is already a Nobel laureate right so his model kind of took a beating and since the facts are facts and they have to be reported so he reported his findings right and based on this they came to the following conclusion about the structure of atom so so conclusion about the structure of atom was this about the structure of atom The first conclusion that he made was was based on his first observation and what was that most of it passed undeflected what does it mean it means it is not encountering anything so if there is an atom it has got a lot of empty space in it correct so that is the first observation that he reported so he said most of the atom has an empty space right it has an empty space empty space as most alpha particles alpha particles are undeflected are undeflected right that's the first thing he observed. That was the first conclusion. Okay? Now, somewhere deflected, right? Somewhere deflected. Okay? Now, if they were deflected, deflection could be a positive charge or a negative charge. If there is a positive charge, it will repel. If there is a negative charge, it will attract. You are not, you do not know, right? You have not seen it hitting a positive charge. But then, if it was a negative charge, what will happen? It will tend to get absorbed by that. It will go and stick there. That did not happen. And even otherwise, we knew that the negative charges are very, very, very small. They are not at all massive. So, it must be the counter positive that is doing all this and there must be a, a repulsion. Okay. So, so, a small number of a small number of reflections small number of reflections pointed to pointed to and you see so 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 this going there and coming back all the way had it been a negative charge it would have got stuck into that it would not have bounced back at least right so so a few reflections pointed to a very massive now two things must have happened so a, a, a very fast bullet okay a very fast bullet moving like this and hitting and and, and what and hitting an ant will do what will it bounce back no it will carry the ant through okay so maybe if it, even if it was positive then and it bounced off it means that this is very very massive the thing that that is there there here right somewhere concentrated in the center 
that must be very very massive we still don't know what what the structure is right okay so 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 then he said that pointed to a very massive positively charged charged mass positively charged mass which later came to be called nucleus later called nucleus okay and it has to be concentrated in a very small volume in a very small volume right it has to be in a very very small volume correct that was his second thing and then he calculated i could have gone into those details of his calculations but but maybe it will become a bit too much at this stage so so let me just point out what he concluded his calculations showed that calculations showed that that nucleus was extremely small compared to nucleus was extremely small compared to compared to the atom and he found out that atom with nucleus size being 10 to the power minus 15 meters compared to the atom size of to the atom size of of 10 to the power minus 10 meters okay this was his calculation okay and and kind of if you want to understand then then if if say your nucleus is of the size of a of a cricket ball okay a cricket ball then then the atom will be of radius 5 kilometers is that kind of a thing so you can understand the emptiness of the atom and you can understand the whole concentration of a very very high amount of mass in a very 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 small volume right <clears throat> fine so 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 he he did some observations he concluded and then he form his own atomic model right so so rutherford's so that led to that led to the rutherford's rutherford's atomic model atomic model okay so you see you you saw something you you concluded about the nature of things and now you are condensing everything into a new model of atom that is radically different from what was proposed by thomson right so so he said that that number 1 that there is a massive positively charged nucleus at the center which is surrounded by electrons right a massive positively charged positively charged charged mass is at the center of the atom is at the center of the atom and and this massive object 
is called is called nucleus he named it nucleus okay now if it is not smeared right it's there at the center where are the electrons are they embedded into it but if they were embedded into it you will not be so easily able to to snatch them off as we did earlier right as we saw in the experiment you rub a silk, silk cloth and, and a glass rod and you see, see electrons moving from here to there will it be that easy the thing is no so what must happen to the negatively charged particles right so so the second observation the, the second tenet of this model was that the, the nucleus is surrounded by electrons nucleus is surrounded by electrons they are surrounded by electrons and, and what should happen if there is a nucleus if there is a positively charged particle here and there is a very very tiny negatively charged particle here it will actually kind of go and due to the force of attraction due to the coulombic force of attraction it will go and and merge with the nucleus now that does not happen somehow even though there is an attractive force it is able to remain apart understand so if if that is happening then what happens nucleus is surrounded nucleus surrounded by nucleus is surrounded by electrons which are moving which are moving in fixed paths in fixed paths called fixed path called orbit called orbits okay and they must be moving really fast as earth is moving around the sun and in spite of gravity the the attractive pull is not getting sucked in by the sun otherwise if we were stationary we we'll start moving towards the sun and the day will come and there will be the end to the earth that does not happen right or at least that does not seem to be happening anytime soon so so that's why he said that they are moving in orbit and and it resembles our solar system and it resembles our solar system okay that was his 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 second point and then his third point electrons and the nucleus the electrons and the electron and the nucleus electrons and the nucleus are held by electrostatic force of attraction okay he he said all this without realizing that some another sledge hammer was going to hit him and hit him very very hard okay and he'll not be able to defend himself okay that we'll we will see next